Hello and welcome to this section of the Circuit Analysis Tutor. In this section we're going to tackle this node voltage problem that has uh, dependent current sources. And I'm going to tell you right now, this problem is going to take a little while to work, but it's a perfect example of a test problem because it tests your knowledge of node voltage really extensively and you get thrown the loop of the dependent sources in two different places. Um, it's just a great it's a great test problem because it really flexes those muscles. So if you, if you think you've really understood everything up to this point in the course, I encourage you pause the video right now and just try to work this problem on your paper and then see if you can get the right answer. So we're trying to find what is the power developed by the 20 volt source? What's the power developed by the 20 volt source? And we're going to use the node voltage method to get there. So give it a shot if you, if you want. Go ahead and pause the video, try to work the problem out. There's no, okay, there's a you know, there's some work to get to the answer, but everything we've covered up to this point, if you really and truly have understood it, should prepare you for this. The only problem with this, just like anything in math and science, is it's a little more complicated. There'd be probably more equations, a few more steps, definitely more algebra. So we're probably gonna fill up all of the boards, all four of the boards doing this guy. But nothing fundamentally is more challenging as far as like a crazy twist, right? So let's get started. First of all, think about what is your end game? What's the power developed by the 20 volt source? Well, here's the 20 volt source. We know that if we're trying to find the power developed by the source, we know the voltage. So to find the power, we need to know the current flowing out of this source. So P is equal to IV, right? We've talked about that. So we need to find this current, right? So we've discussed in the past that once you know the node voltages uh, in a problem, then by definition you can calculate everything else. So what we're going to do is go through and identify the nodes, identify the reference node, solve the problem for the node voltages. Once we have the node voltages, then we'll be able to find the current through there. Once we know the current through there, then we can find the power. So sometimes it's nice to have a big picture roadmap. Let's do the node voltage method, get the node voltages, then find the current through there, then find the power. Okay, that's what my plan is going to be. So let's go and just try to apply everything as we've been you know, as we've discussed. So, first of all, we see a giant node at the bottom of the drawing, right? This, this enormous node at the bottom that connects everything. So this is going to be our reference node, and since I have a bunch of text here, I'm just going to put the reference node down here by this little, this little symbol down here. That means this is the common node with which all of our node voltages will be referenced. Now, where are the other essential nodes? Well, here's obviously one giant one on the bottom. But we have one here, 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 and here. So there's four at the top plus the fifth one, the giant one at the bottom. So there's five essential nodes, right? So under normal circumstances, we would say, okay, there's five essential nodes total. That means four node voltage equations, which is going to lead to a lot of algebra to solve four simultaneous equations. However, we have a dependent source. This is why this problem's a little tricky. It's not connected as it was the last time directly between two nodes that are close to one another, but it is connected across the circuit to another node far away. So it does meet the definition. I told you, anytime you have a source, dependent source or not, anytime you have a source connected directly between two essential nodes with nothing else, it's gonna basically reduce the number of equations that you have. And you'll have to write those constraint equations that we talked about. This definitely fits the bill. All right, so let's first get started by marking our essential nodes. So let me put a, a giant dot here, and I'll just mark this with a, a big one. That's essential node one. Let me mark this one with essential node two. I'll put little circles around them so you can tell that those are just labelings for the essential node. This guy I'm going to call essential node three. Big surprise, this guy would be essential node 